So let's dive into some of the lower paradigms, one could say. And just follow my voice here and just see what comes up, okay? Just look at the life you lived so far. Pretty hard, huh? Do you ever feel like it's just a little harder for you? Just looking around at everyone else having it so fucking easy? For real. I, I'm not even joking here. Do you ever sing into this? Like, seeing people just kill it. Whether it's dating, success, they just have it so easy. But for you, it's a little different. And it's always been that way, no? Even from a young age. Just looking around, it's like, why do people have it so easy? Why is it so fucking hard for me? Right? Why do I have all these fucking limitations and beliefs? Why is it so hard for me? Is there something wrong with me? Do you ever feel like there's something a little off with you? What did you do to deserve that? What did they do to deserve it going so well? People who didn't deserve it just take it for fucking granted. You ever see that? Like, say you want a good dating life. Why is it that those assholes are the ones who get the girls, right? They just take it for granted. A good person like you, you can't even do it. Why were you imposed those limitations and shit? No? Aren't you a good person? Why are you being punished? Do you agree? Do you ever feel that? Like, what did you do? Like, for real. It's like you're being punished, you have all these good intentions, yet for some reason it's different and harder for you. Why couldn't you be born in the easy track to success? Who ever feels that way? Put your hand up. I used to wonder that so much. And by the way, notice how you feel? We just descended. <laughs> this is that reality. Blame others. Self-pity, outrage, fear, grief. We've descended in those lower realms, right? Now here, let's shift it. Notice if you notice a difference here. Although, yeah, it's a little harder for us. Aren't you grateful for some of the shit you went through? It led you to this. It made you realize and learn different lessons that others might have not realized. And although you might see someone have it easier, are they more whole as a person? Perhaps they're missing some of those epiphanies that you had. Perhaps there's a certain pride in that journey. The fact that it was, you know, quite a turbulent journey. And when you look back, that'll make the most epic fucking movie. You don't want it smooth. You'll look back and be like, that used to be me. Yeah, I had those stuff. I had to work through it. But look at me now and god damn was that a sick fucking movie, eh? No? Yeah. yeah. And notice a shift, right? Different languages, different focuses. This one here is more gratitude based. Like I'm grateful for the challenges as opposed to I'm a victim. It's happening to me, for me, to me, for me. The world has my back, is on my side. I can trust the world. Things are happening for my own best interest. Possibilities stuck. The world is against you, out to get you. God, the universe is against you. It put these limitations on you. You're being punished. You're a bad person. <sighs> Same facts, just someone say going through some different challenges, different perspectives, different realities. And two people could go, be going through the exact same thing, but once more in those parallel realities. Can you guys see that when you see someone else speaking? If they're in a higher reality or lower reality, based on what they tend to focus on in the situation? Can you see it in others? Yes. Can you see it in others? Yes. Okay, harder to see in yourself when you're on a rant. There's a little bit of consciousness there that says, probably on a rant, <laughs> but you keep going down the rant, right? Pulling you down. So that's one of the first ones is just being aware in others, and then eventually you can see in yourself the vocabulary. What I just did here, you can apply to anything, even just general advice. Like, here's one, you wanna be successful, you can do this and like you'll unleash your best self and then you'll be able to provide for and change the world and world peace, so on and so forth, right? There's one, or are you sick and tired of just being stuck at the bottom, right? Seen other people move ahead, isn't it your turn to rise up and take what's yours? People are lying to you with that bullshit, positivity, peace fucking shit. You wanna take yours, don't you? It's your birthright to take yours, put your mark on this world, and get the shit you know you deserve inside. Fuck the liars, fuck the people who hold you down. How many people are holding you down? Ah! Fuck them! 
I'm getting excited. About right? It. It's like everyone's like, you sense the riling up. You're like, yeah, yeah. And then guess what? It controls your focus. You're like, well, who are those people who are holding me down? <laughs> yeah. And then like the them. Literally. They. The, as long as there's a them. Funny, it's always so general. Them. They're holding you down. And then like you might notice, I'm like, you're right. It's my friend. It's my friend Timmy. He's holding me down. And it could be a friend that's like, you love this guy, but for some reason, now that that seed's planted, you're like, you know what? Timmy wasn't the nicest. He didn't wish me happy birthday. He's fucking holding me down. Fucking Timmy, man. He was right. I need to keep fueling this. You go through some of the texts, you know, fucking Timmy, look at this guy's face. You play more YouTube shit. They're holding you down. You know who are the worst? Your friends. Be aware of your friends. Timmy, Timmy, <laughs> fuck Timmy. Full RAS flip, keep fueling it, and that runs you. Crazy, huh? A, a sign of low vibration energy is that you, you struggle to be happy with what you have. So have you ever noticed in spiritual work they say folks on gratitude or appreciation? Even in some of these kind of foo-foo, um, here in LA there's like a lot of these foods like goji berries, right? And they'll be like, gratitude, goji berries. You guys ever seen that? Or cafe gratitude here in LA, you ever seen that? Pretty funny. You want to hear a funny story about that? It turned out that the owners have a farm where they kill cows or something like that. And uh, all the vegetarian people are like, ah, it's kind of, I don't know. I find stuff like that kind of weirdly funny. But anyway, so. They do um, have great food. Great though. food. Yeah. But I eat there whenever I can. Great food. So, <laughs> carb heavy, great food. So, um, yeah, totally awesome. Either milkshake. Oh my God. Yeah. So, anyway, um, so what you have is you remember I said your emotional palate? When you're in a suppressed state, your emotional palate has a hard time feeling or tasting gratitude. And so if you communicate with somebody in a lower derp state about gratitude, they will zone out. The way you can see what energy is running them is you look in the pupil and they zone out. They zone out. And I mean, I learned this at a younger age when I would date, say, you know, an exotic dancer and she's in a lower state. And I bring her to like some beautiful environment, very peaceful, very fun, and you see her zoning out. And you know, we had a very entertaining intimacy, so it was hard to cut it off. But the point is, I had that issue. Now, imagine that you bring a crack-addicted homeless person into a beautiful mansion. Is he gonna be like, wow, and just take the opportunities that you provide? Or is he gonna zone out, complain, and run off to the bathroom to shoot up. What do you think is more likely to happen? Well, test it yourself if you want to know. I'm not even going to tell you. Try that experiment. I mean, to tell you the truth, there's no, yeah, there's no. Maybe you'll be surprised. Everyone's like, yeah, and he's like, actually, just chill. You yeah, don't he's know. Like, he, Go he try just, it. Go yeah, try he gets it. super rich. He finally got given opportunity. He's super rich, stomps in your face, and he's the next, like, Richard Branson or, Elon you know, Musk. Bill Gates, right? So maybe that could happen. And, and we can't just generalize an entire group of people at a certain income because there's going to be different reactions. But there's also the fact that usually, yeah, you know, if somebody is in a disempowered state, you put them in a more empowered environment, you haven't, you haven't helped them through that process of letting go of the trauma. This is, a, this is a very sad thing, but who here has ever read the book In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts by Gabriel Mate? Anybody here read that? It's a must read. And what he explains is that a lot of people who have hardcore drug addiction, we put them in prison. And the reason they have a hardcore drug addiction is they're filled with trauma energy, right? And nothing changes till energy moves, guys, right? So when you're, when you're um, in a deep drug addiction and trying to recover from that, and you're told stop shooting up or drinking or whatever, unfortunately, you're resonating with that self-damaging substance. You're resonating with it. Your palate can't feel any joy or gratitude. And I mean, that's a common thing with say cocaine addicts, right? It pumps their dopamine so hard that their dopamine stops producing and they need cocaine in order to feel something. That's what's so scary about you know, indulging too frequently in that kind of party lifestyle is that you can't even have a palate for just regular joy anymore. And it's funny, a lot of very attractive women in LA, they, they like to party hard. And if you wind up dating them, you'll see that they, they, many of them can even get to a point where um, if you bring them and do fun stuff, they can't even let it land. They just want to go party more. And it's, it's very sad to watch. And in Hollywood, it's very seductive because it's very glamorous. You know, you're up in the Hollywood Hills mansion party, you know, partying hard with like the best coca with, you know, some famous actor. It's hard to stop, right? And they get sucked in. It's pretty dangerous. I'm sure many of your friends have been in that lifestyle. We could get you to talk about that at some point. But basically what you have is they can't experience joy anymore, okay? 
So the palette is shifted. Now that's why, again, the news and media and inputs feeds what you do have a palette for. So gratitude, appreciation. If somebody's at a lower paradigm and we want to do a speaking event for them, we will often say, go for it, get yours. They're out to get you because we want to, sh we want to speak to them where they're at. There is no value in speaking to somebody at a paradigm above what they can receive, right? It's like in the mainstream news, they'll often say, you know what, it's just about character, be a good person, it'll all work out. Is that always true? No, no. but if you give too complex of advice to somebody watching a mainstream show, you might just confuse them. It's overwhelming and they shut down. So it's like they say, milk for babes, meat for strong men. The milk for babes, okay, if you ever heard the Kabbalion, one of the first ideas in it, right? The milk for babes is either simplistic stuff or stuff meant to rile you up. So that riling you up is better than apathy, which is the main default state of most human beings in our society at very least. Because we've been pulled out of the jungle and our tribal lifestyle and seeing the beautiful stars and the rolling hills and hunting and fucking and having fun and having our friends there and having everybody kind of sleeping in some cool place and we've been shuttled off to be a little battery for the matrix like what we started the seminar about, right? And so we get put into apathy and in this kind of derp state where we can be a good battery. Awesome, great stuff, okay. I'm not advising to go back to living in a cave. We could do that if we want. I'm not advising that. I just want to get, bring awareness and light to you to show you what's going on and how to move up. So what you have is this sort of derp state and you feed someone at that state. But what you got to do is you got to move past it. You've got to become aware of the energy running you and move past it. So again, Julian, one of the first things he explained was, is that person, if you're seeing it in others, expressing something in terms of gratitude or complaint? Another one, who here has ever read the book Crucial Conversations? Put your hand up. Okay. Just notice how objective someone is with what they're saying. You know, it's like, do they say the actual facts or do they sensationalize it in a negative light? People always sensationalize it. Like say, you know, you're at this event and you know, you saw, like you were asked to move in front. Let's say that, like, hey, just have a seat. What, what, move a row, move a row. You might sensationalize it. Say you're triggered by that. Like how dare they ask me to move a row forward? Those motherfuckers, that's all they wanted to do is just get me to move forward. And then you might go out and be like, you know what happened at that fucking seminar? They're trying to manipulate me. They're telling me to move forward, da 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 da, da. Now, fact or story? Story. You're assuming the intentions. What's the fact? You were asked to move forward one row. That's it. That's the simple fact. And when you're in those lower states, you will create stories that will feed whatever state you're in. Remember that, you will create stories and fixate on stories that feed the state you're in. If you're in a state of fear, you will notice the common theme with all your stories will be based around fear, as opposed to the facts. You know, they, they, they pointed me out in front of everyone and everyone was judging me, they were all looking at me. Oh my God, it was horrible. Fact or story? Story. Story. But it's a story that feeds a certain emotional state. So you'll notice this. Look at the stories that people tend to focus on. How objective are they and what's the common theme in those stories? What state is it reinforcing? And then of course, turn it around and what stories are you hooked on? What is running you? What's the story you're playing based on facts or based on your life in general? Just even zoom out and look at your life. What's the story of your life? It's glorious or, oh man, it's a struggle, it's hard, I'm a victim, all this shit, people are always fucking me over. What's the story? And then what are the actual facts? It's crazy, when you notice this, like you can make that split you're just shocked, absolutely shocked. Even in terms of different opportunities you could jump at or different risks, what'll happen is we tend to overblow that risk. Like, oh man, if I do this, then I'll be ruined and so on and so forth, as opposed to, no, if I just do that, then, you know, I'll just find a way back. It's not that big of a deal. And how that shit runs us is insane. It tweaks your mind. Like most of us don't even see reality. We don't even see people. Facts versus stories, you will project that onto people. 
If you're in this state of fear, you're gonna look at threats everywhere. Like, oh man, does that guy have a gun in his fucking sweater? Oh shit, oh, does he have a knife? Fuck, are they judging me? Are they gonna follow me? Like this paranoia. We even have it with strangers. You're walking down the street in a state of fear, you're like, who's staring at me? What are they thinking of me? You're sitting by yourself. Oh my God, I'm sitting by myself here at Cafe Gratitude. Oh fuck, what are people thinking of me? They're thinking this loser, he's by himself, he has no friends. What a loser. They're probably pointing, oh, what if someone like Instagram stories me by myself, everyone will see. Oh, what are they all gonna say about me in comments? Oh fuck, they're gonna think I'm a loser. Fear. You wanna know the main thing about learning success with women that's the hardest part? It's going to a bar or club where there's a lot of people and not feeling that. That's literally like 90% of your first five years They're all of learning to go me. meet yeah. and date. It's like you're in the environment, it feels so heavy, you go talk to a few people, you're in that control muscle, they feel weird about it, reject you, and then you go into a tailspin and walk home a mess. That was probably my first many years in that. It was literally the heaviness around it and the energy around it that was so much harder than just the act of going and talking or dating. Mm. But then it goes even deeper. So you won't just pick up on the environment. Like say you're at a cafe or you go out. Again, it's like, they're all staring at me. They're judging my every move. Oh my God, they're thinking this now. They're thinking that. You might say hi to someone and then they're like, oh, what are they thinking about me? They looked at me, they saw me say hi. Oh shit. And then I'm sure you've heard this, memory is state access dependent. So you're not just gonna zone in on the environment, your mind is now gonna pull up all those fucking memories that are similar where you experience the same thing. Take all those memories and even take memories that have nothing to do with this and then tweak them. It's like, I remember fucking Timmy. He was a friend, but now that I think about it, every memory recalls a reframe, maybe he was also judging me. Maybe he was also looking at me and judging me by myself when I was eating at Cafe Gratitude. Maybe he was thinking I was a loser too. And then that person thought I was a loser. That person, fuck, the world thinks I'm a loser. Whatever state you're in, you pull up a memory, think about the memory, recall it, and then reframe it based on whatever mood you're in and then put it back in the memory bank. It is funny for me, I will, I will reframe like a really bad stuff that happened in the past and it, because I've learned to be in a much better mood, I'll remember it as not being bad at all. And then I'll relook it up and I'm like, that was really messed up. I'm like, that's weird. I don't remember it as being so messed up. I'm so bad that I'll have people that, that really take advantage of me in a very negative way. And I'll remember them as so much fun and positive late. And then, and then I'll like reconnect with them and start like doing some of them again. And then they, they act up. I'm like, I literally forgot about this. Like I've, I've seen, like I've had it where I went back to exes like eight, nine times because I just forget, I forget. Like I'm single again, I'm having fun. I'm like, oh, this is my friend. You know, we start dating again and I'm like, I think I saw this before. I'm like, holy shit, why did I forget this again? And so in some ways it, it actually can be, and that's where remembering the negative can be good because you can actually, it, there are things that are a problem that are real and you can forget and there's a balance. So I, I've also had to learn to find that balance. But again, I'd much rather be in the situation where I'm not afraid to make myself vulnerable because I'm powerful. And even if they do act up a little bit, I just shit, you know, dust it off and keep going and having fun. No big deal. It truly isn't. And understand what your mind is doing. You can't see reality typically. It is biased and colored. How do you know that? Because whenever, if, if there's four of us here and something happens, everybody remembers the story in a different way. And they're going to remember it through their biases, through their RAS. Quick question, if it's quick. The first breakup that was devastating and everything. Yeah. Ever. Louder and quick. What got you out of that? Six months. TM. Okay, that stuff. So, uh, truth. So now, okay, so keeping on going. So now what we have is we're not seeing reality as it is. For example, your question, I love you for being here, and I can tell you're, I mean, you know, you got some muscle going, you're probably hitting the gym, I can see you're smart, but again, we're on a different thread, and you're in your head, seeing it through your lens. I've done that for so many years where I would just ask these random questions when I'm in class and stuff because I'm so trapped in my head. I can't see it for what it is because I'm in my inner dialogue. So a big thing is think less. Just say that word, think less. Think less. Okay, but by the way, be more aware. Say that. Be more okay, aware. so aware, but think less. See, think, see thinking is, is like the shit, but awareness is even a whole other level, right? Because when we're thinking, it's like, look up in our head, right? We're just fucking aware. You know, be aware. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm. 
Awesome. Very I, I will say just too, I love that you asked that too because it points it out. Like if anyone was kind of thrown off, like what does that have to do with anything? Again, another reinforcer. We're all here, but we're all living in separate little parallel realities. Like everyone here, like you got to wonder like, what are other people thinking? Maybe there are some people here who are fucking hating this. Actually, there probably are. They're triggered by it. There's like, what's this woo-woo reality shit? And they're literally in that world right now in this room next to you, filtering it as if we're just like, woo, just like, what are they talking about? It is get yours. What's this collaborative shit? Competitive, fucking, there has to be a winner. There has to be a loser. We can't all win. We need losers. We need, like, that's what's going on. We need losers. As a joke, we should run a whole seminar like that. Just the most, like, fucked up seminar. <laughs> and everybody would be going crazy, too. You know it. Mm. And everyone was, like, almost about to join. They were like, we need, like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and, and so what, what happens is that um, the people who need this the most, it's almost impossible to reach them. I have seen, like, when you see that person who's, zo so that's another thing. So we looked at, again, gratitude versus victim. Say that, gratitude versus victim. Gratitude, gratitude versus, versus victim. victim. Stories versus facts. Stories versus facts. Okay, another one is aware versus retreating into the mind. Say aware, aware versus, versus retreating into the mind. into the mind. And so people who often are in that lower paradigm, or that more limited paradigm, I'd say, I guess, they will, you'll see their pupils retreating. I've had it where I'm doing energy work on a crowd and they are like, these guys are like, they might as well be on like a DMT tunnel. And, and like the guy who needs it the most is sitting off in the corner, retreating into their mind. There is a parasite of energy on them. Just like the mainstream media, there's a parasite of energy running it, fueling it. There's a paras parasite of energy running them that is blocking what they're seeing. I suspect that even at a high level of human experience, there's probably an inability to see a lot of really intense stuff that is like probably in this room right now. Like, I don't mean to be hella weird, but like, could be a fucking alien, could be an angel, a, a low vibration energy entity, could be anything. And let me say why I say that. I say that simply because when I look at the extent to which people are blind, blind, Say that word blind. 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 It feels good to say it. So I see how much people are blind to simple higher paradigm stuff. And I'm like, if they can't see that, I wonder what I can't see. I don't even know what. I wouldn't even profess to know. I think people are like, well, there's this and that. It's like, who the fuck knows, right? I'm just saying that I can recognize the limits of my own awareness. And in recognize limits of your own awareness, you can actually move up. That's a very cool thing. I think real confidence isn't like, oh, I know everything. I get it. That's very limited. Real confidence is recognizing what you're not aware of and believing that you can continue to move up and find that next paradigm and that that lasts your whole life. That's real confidence. To me, I love that. I resonate with that big time. Just point your finger and stare at it as a weird experiment. Put your fucking finger up. Don't put it in anybody. Look at it and say, out here. Out here. Out here. Out here. Look at the environment. Say, out here. Look at me. Out Look at your out friends. Here. Out here. Pause, 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 be aware. Do you feel a bit more awake? Yeah. Just a shred more, right? Yeah. Okay, look at the detail in the finger, the little hairs, the little spots, the little wrinkles. You're an animal, you're an evolved animal, you're an evolved monkey apparently. Okay, say out here. Out here. Great, okay. <laughs> Sarah's gonna show the full demo in a bit. So, so, so what you have, Luke couldn't make it today, so Sarah's gonna do the full, yeah. So, <laughs> and then we'll go. <laughs> so, okay, so notice get out here. Okay, great. So from there, the next one I want you to notice, not just trapped in the mind versus out here, is in the pupil. And this is the one that I really wanna draw your attention on, because it is badass. This is where you can look in someone's pupil and predict their behavior just looking in the eyes. Now, I, was, I, I have been aware of this for so long because when you, study, when you work on improving with your dating advice, your social skills, you're out in say bars and clubs four hours a day, every day, watching the opposite sex and learning to read what they're feeling. So I wound up doing that for, for 15, 16 years, every day, four or five hours a day, just talking to people 
and seeing how they would act. So, and then I also have many students. I'm coaching uh, 150 days a year. So I'm coaching 150 days a year. I'm out every day I'm meeting people and I'm watching their pupils and seeing how they act. Kind of funny stuff to think about, right? That's an interesting lifestyle we live. So what did we learn in that process? What we learned was you can look in the pupil and see where somebody's at. I can look at any of you guys and with 80, 90% accuracy, I bet, I'm just guessing, I'm not totally sure. I mean, I've, I've, I've made some pretty weird predictions before. Like I could talk to guys and um, say how many um, intimate partners they might have had. I'm like, this number, this number. And people are like, ah! Like they're tripping out. I'm not at right 100% of the time, but you could generally guess by body language, eye contact, expansive energy, how relaxed and calm they are. Just little stuff you can learn to, to kind of figure it out. Okay, it's not, a, again, I don't want to say anything crazy. Like, I'm not making any crazy statements here. It's just, you can generally intuit where someone's at. You, you know psychics, like a psychic? I mean, maybe they're really psychic, but in my personal view, most psychics are just people very, very good at reading people. They have, they're very, very good at what's called cold reading. And they combine being very aware of what to look for in people with also making kind of generalized statements. Like they'll say, you're the kind of person where you like to lay back and kind of take it in and see what it's all about. And then at that point, you like to express yourself. And you're like, oh my God, right? So right. Yeah, you're so right. So they combine se um, sentences that really resonate with people with vibing them out. I mean, for example, because I've been through a breakup, you know, I saw my buddy the other day, I'm like, oh, you had a brutal breakup. He's like, how do you know, right? It's like, you see this kind of like, you're looking at this vibrant man who has every reason to be happy. And I know he's dating and I can see that puppy dog look in his pupil. He, I can see he's traumatized. And once I see that, it's probably a breakup. It's not like, again, it's not like the psychic, the, the, the angel told me, it's just basic awareness, right? You can see in the pupil if somebody's more like the golem, the golem, right? The precious, the precious or if they're more expansive. Like I already know who in this room I would get along with as a regular friend and be able to hang out with and it would add value versus guys who in this room who I'd relate with more from a teacher to student paradigm. I can see it just looking in the pupil. So I don't mean to make any, again, not the crazy claim, but by me saying that, I hope to God it's making you aware there's things that you can become attuned to. Now here's the key to it all. When you're stuck in your head, retreated, right? Remember we said, out here versus stuck in your head? If you're stuck in your head, it's because you're in coping. Say coping versus thriving, say that. Coping. coping versus thriving. So when you're in coping, you don't have the bandwidth. Say bandwidth. bandwidth. You don't have the bandwidth to look at other people. You ask that qu a question that's not maybe related to what the group's learning or on the track with the group because you're in your head coping. Did you happen to have a breakup recently? Yeah. Okay, so that's why he asked, right? He said yes. I heard it was one portion of what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, so, you're, so, so it's like you get stuck on that thing, right? That's how we get triggered. The whole energy is moving, but someone maybe feels offended. And so they're in a limited bandwidth, right? Bro, let me tell you, if I'd just been through my breakup, I, I would have been like not only asking the question, I probably, even after like I gave you our time, if I was in the audience, I would have probably asked five more times, and then I'd chase you out to the car, <laughs> and, then, and then to all my friends, I'd be like, so-and-so did this, and blah, 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 blah. Like, it's like, trust me, bro, I've been there, right? We're all, we all go into a coping state. So that coping state makes it where we're too trapped in our head that we have awareness of what's outside of ourselves. But the next awareness, again, is in the pupil. I see it, Julian can see it, Sarah can see it. We want you to see this thing with the pupil. Start training yourself to be more aware of out there. Like, what's the context? That's a question I always ask myself. What is the context? What is appropriate in this context beyond me? Okay, start also trying to put yourself in the heads and bodies of other people. This sounds weird, but you gotta start doing it. What is the world through their eyes? That's the question. What's it feel like to be them? What are the thoughts they have? And you gotta be in touch with this, okay? It will require time to get a feel for this, but there is such a thing as getting a feel for people. We have it, like say you're, you're really stressed, you're gonna feel that shit. You're next to him, you're gonna be like, that stressed energy will transfer. If you're just living in your head, and that's what he said, it's like mentally retreating as opposed to being full body awareness, you won't feel shit within you and you won't be able to connect to the outside world and other people. And that's why it's also very hard. If you're someone who's mentally like, well, I don't understand. What do you mean a bigger context? Like you're not even feeling the wave of energy that we're building here in this seminar room. You're just looking at the content and data like a fucking computer, like a robot. Like what is the data and content? 
I don't know about this soul, the soul of the fucking seminar, the soul of the content, the soul of the person where you experience. Like even right now, the way I've put this out there, there's a certain buildup. And I hope you feel it. If not, you're like, what's buildup? I'm just hearing soul word quite a lot. There's some soul, okay? That's something you gotta learn how to do, how to inhabit your body. Most of us just stay trapped up here. And you can see it too by how much life is in their body, as opposed to, so this is also what I'm gonna talk about, and right now I'm only in my head. I might do a couple little movements, but I'm only in my head right now delivering content, and this is the data, and I believe souls are very important, saying the soul might help a lot. Different, right? Get a read for that. Feel your body. Meditation helps with this. Yoga helps with this. You gotta learn body awareness again. And when you see it in someone else too, not only will you get a feel where it's like they're only in their head, but there's like this retreating and a certain fixation. So we kind of mentioned that before, like a fixation. Um, the cool thing about you, by the way, with the question is that with the fixation, there usually tends to be a lot of defensiveness around it. And there wasn't with you, which is great. Like he said, it was right most people out. would have just kept persisting, but no. But no, but no, you'd hear that all the time. You're an aware guy, you're just in a bit of pain from the breakup. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, no, but that's the thing. So it's like, notice in yourself and others, where's the fixation, how much defensiveness? Even now, as a little quick audit in the room, catch yourself, are you following or are you still fixating on something that was said, something that happened? Identify what that is, what about it spoke to you, why are you fixating on that? What is it feeding? And then you can bring some more awareness to yourself. Do you guys remember the release versus control muscles we did in our previous segment? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's what Julian is, is talking about here, is that guys, there's so much in control, but when you're in release, it actually frees up bandwidth. And you'll see in that case, if you look in the pupils, two things. One is the person who's not really there, which is kind of glazing over just mentally, or a certain fixation on something. It's like, it's compulsive. Like you said, like the golem, where it's like. They're precious. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, but this, but this, but this, but this. Like say there's a certain question. It's like, so what about this? Okay, well, let me show you the, the context. No, but this. There's that, 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 you're like, whoa. Like you get a feel for that, <laughs> right? Okay, you gotta start catching that in others, and more importantly, turn it around, start catching it within yourself. As teachers, we're very big on this because we see guys self-defeating. They get caught on this one thing and they're trying to fix it at the symptom. Okay, somebody who's maybe eating really unhealthy, they have acne and they wanna like pick the zit off with a, uh, with a knife, right? How do I pick it off with a knife? They're like, stop eating unhealthy, please, please, please. You know, so they're, they're trying to fix it at the symptom. And also, would you, I wanna give a, a really cool kind of practical breakdown of what Julian was saying about feeding the vi or reading the vibe and writing it. One of the biggest things for me in my um, journey of learning social skills was to go out with a group of people, maybe like, you know, two of my friends and, and maybe say three girls and <clears throat> to be in that interaction and to kind of let the vibe in, like let, let the vibe in and kind of ride that vibe together and sort of build this vibe together and sort of like let the vibe almost let me add to the jokes, add to the conversation, and just keep building and feeding it. And again, that comes back to the release muscle as opposed to the control muscle. What I used to do was everybody would be building the vibe and I would always be in my head calculating what I could get out of it. And sadly, you know, whether it's people I've worked with over the years or friends of mine over the years, we'll all be out like building this awesome vibe and you see them retreating into their heads, calculating about how people, and here's where it gets really ugly actually, so when you release and you go with the vibe, often your status shoots up, okay? Your status shoots up. And that person who's in the control muscle, they see your status shooting up and they panic and then they clamp down harder, trying to control the situation, not able to figure out how you're controlling it so well. When Julian is teaching TM, Transformation Mastery, and he's trying to let go of trauma, what was my journey learning, say, social skills? Why did we stumble on this? What happened was I was so traumatized growing up that it put me in perpetual coping. Then what happened was because I was in perpetual coping, I'd go into situations where the cool people or the top people would be kind of vibing out. It would threaten me, I'd go further into coping and then I would try to come up with every technique in the book to twist that in my favor, but people would alienate me. 
Okay, now as I let go of trauma, what happened was I could fit in in those situations and actually wind up being the high status person in those particular situations. To be honest, what happened to me was from learning this, I would go into environments where there's like billionaires, multimillionaires, most attractive people of the opposite sex and whatnot, and, I, and I'd go in these environments and I would be so much let go that even the billionaires in that environment would often chase me for rapport and you know, the women would chase me for rapport because I was so much letting go. A lot of those guys that are billionaires, they're like, I am a billionaire, eh, 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 right? And seeing me so let go, they're like, because a lot of billionaires, they're very, um, very sensitive to the fact that they work so hard to make money, but they work so hard to make money and now they're miserable. Julian posted a meme on his Instagram today that you might even, yeah. if you decide to include this in the video, um, that you could actually put in it where it shows the person's life, like they're chasing money, but their life is winding down and then finally at the end of their life, they get it. A lot of people that are very wealthy sort of feel that, right? Where they've, 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 they've maxed out that control paradigm and burned a lot of their life in it when they could have been making as much or more money in a release paradigm, a higher paradigm. So that's something to be aware of what Julian's talking about. That's another sign of what energy is running you. This is Julian and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level, okay? Be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.